we had uh, no less than a half dozen staff members make predictions. We always make staff predictions in the Wolverine. I will tell you right now, I'm not going to identify who is who, but half of our staff predicted Michigan to win the national championship. And the other half were uh, tossing out there like teams, programs that are, it's not unreasonable to say that they could win it like Alabama, Georgia. Right. But that's kind of where this thing is going. Um, uh, across the board, you're seeing people predicting Michigan to uh, to win the Big Ten championship. You look at uh, you know you 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 look at the um, me- preseason magazines, uh, whether it be Lindy's and Athlon and Phil Steele. Um, they are uh, it, two of those three predicting the Wolverines to be number one or no, all three of them rather. Excuse me. All three of them predicting Michigan to uh, to be number one in the Big Ten East. And when you're number one in the Big Ten East, let's face it, you're number one in the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you got me, you know, Phil Steele takes he he, he takes he takes uh, every every microcosm of that whole of, of of the sport of football, each team, and breaks it down. Their interior line gives them all these power rankings and things like that. Phil Steele and just about everybody else are giving. Huge kudos to Michigan's defense. And that sits at the core with me. That's where this team's going to win a national championship, in my opinion, where that defense is not going to let down Michigan in in those big games. When all of a sudden speed might be another level that they might not be used to earlier in the season or even throughout the Big Ten, uh, signs Ohio State. You know, this defense is going to be ready uh, speed wise, I think, and on the edge and then on the interior um, with Chris Jenkins. I, I just think I, I start I start looking at all the moving parts on that defense, uh, and that's when I get excited. What like I did in 1976 with that that 76 defense. It was just the defense is going to keep them in the game. Is going to keep them in the game every game, even when it, you know it's going to keep them in every game. And I think this. This defense is gonna is gonna do that and not have to be bailed out uh, by like the scenario against TCU and JJ. You know, and JJ made some mistakes to put him in that situation. We know that we've broken down that probably broken that game down way too much than they should. But uh, it's a thorn uh, that doesn't want to happen. Regardless, John, if if Michigan wins a national championship or not, I, I always ask myself, what success? What is a successful season? Um, and and what's an acceptable see however you want it, whatever word you want to use, they got to win that first playoff game. That is something. I mean, they got to. I mean, Jim Harbaugh has won one postseason game his first year in in Michigan, and, and he's offered it ever since. Um, they, you got to get the title game. If you get to the title game, you know, that that's still a, a really good season. If you fall in the title game, that's still a really good season. But and I, I swear to God, though, anything short of a national championship, it's going to be disappointing to me. It really is. And we have heard multiple Michigan players say that same thing. And that just tells you how the narrative around Schembechler Hall has changed since 2020. It has. Like two and four and what is going on here? What is happening? And a, a big part of that narrative change is that after two decades of falling short more often, way more often than not against Ohio State, Michigan got it right. Michigan, for two straight years, has applied the formula that it needed to beat the Buckeyes. And I'm telling you, uh, the confidence that springs from that does it, it just works wonders. And you cannot, Michigan cannot be successful in the Big Ten cannot take the next step uh, in the, in the playoffs like you're uh, arguing for now, which makes perfect sense without first taking down the Buckeyes. And yeah. uh, we've got a, let me quote, everybody loves the, uh, the anonymous opposing coach in all these uh, preview magazines. Well, we've got one here that says this about Michigan and its recent actions. It's proof of concept now. That's why they've stepped it up in recruiting. 
they breed the culture into those guys. It's elitist, but that's built on confidence, and confident teams are consistent. And Michigan is one incredibly confident team right now. And it's not just Michigan players that buy in and coaches that buy in. You are seeing it on a national level where, yes, this is a team that com can compete for the whole shot. And uh, it that's a refreshing thing because that takes you and I back to uh, – and many Michigan fans back to the day when uh, you came into the season, knowing Michigan had a shot, had a shot to uh, not only win the Big Ten, but be among the very elite in the nation and and really take on anybody. You know, one of the one of the biggest barometers for me as far as evaluating how much talent you have back is how much leadership you have back. Okay. And, and how much talent with the, you know, the, that talent leadership combined element and try to fathom who the captains are going to be on this team. I mean, you, you could, you could start some kind of a, of a, of a contest or whatever. And, and, and you would get so many different suggestions. I'm talking about both sides of the ball. There there's, there's justifiably, you know, guys on both sides of the ball that could be captains. And I'm, and I'm not just saying they're because they're good players, because they've they've demonstrated good leadership on and off the field, just the way they present themselves. We've seen a ton of these guys in the press room. And it's like I say to myself, he could be a captain. He could be a captain. You know, just the way they are. Uh, the, the guy right there, number nine. Now, he's only going to be a junior. You know, typically a lot of times it's uh, seniors are your captains. He could be as he, he's more viable to be a captain just about anybody. In my mind, JJ McCarthy is a leader on this team. There's no question about it. And it's always some people think, some coaches think your quarterback should be your captain. But I just that shows you how how deep this how the quality of depth this team has, John. And and that excites me probably more than anything. Yeah, I agree. And, and this is, I mean arguably and uh, almost inarguably uh, J.J. McCarthy's team. He's yeah, it is. The, the guy. He's got to uh, be the source of the swagger, the confidence, the leadership, the playmaking, the balls in his hands on every offensive play. And I, I just think that um, he would be a very good pick for a captain. I'm going to give you a couple more that I think should definitely be captains on this team. And maybe if you want to throw a, a, an extra one in there after I uh, I finish with mine, I will, uh, you know, welcome and embrace that. But I know, I'll give you one on each side of the ball. Blake Corum. Oh, uh, no brainer. No brainer. No brainer. Half stop. I mean, mark it down. That's yeah. what, I mean, just that's checked off. Yeah. Checked off right now. It's in every way. The mere fact that he came back after uh, yeah. a yeah. four. Hundred yard season and eighteen touchdowns and yeah. all the leadership and the the uh, the weight room warrior stuff and and just he is uh, Bo Schembechler would look at him and say he's Michigan yeah and that would be uh, uh, enough of a stamp of approval yeah on the other side of the ball on the defensive side of the ball I would be absolutely shocked if one uh, might. Sainra still was not a captain on this team for everything that he yep. brought to it. His willingness uh, to switch sides of the football, his willingness to, hey, whatever position you need me to play this year, if you want me to play nickel, I'm there. If you want me to play safety, I'm there. If you need me to play that other cornerback, I'll learn it. I'll be that. That's part of it. The fact that he delivered in one of the biggest moments in uh, that game down in Columbus to uh, to flick the ball away at the last possible second from a bigger, uh, much bigger tight end for Ohio State. Right. Saved a touchdown. He delivered in the biggest moments. He showed all the attitude in the world that you want. And I, I just think that um, – that Mike Sainra still would should definitely be among those guys. So, so you hit – well, actually – we had three non-negotiables in our mind, <laughs> okay? We had J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, and Mikey Sanders still. I mean, although, uh, or maybe, maybe, I, maybe, I'm, I'm, maybe you're not agreeing with me on, on J.J., but I, no, I just – No, I, 
a okay. one. I mean, those are three locked in. Those yeah. are three locked in. Yeah. How about a Zach Zenner on offense? And 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 how about a Chris Jenkins on defense? I mean, you there's five guys right there. Zach yeah. Zenner has been an amazing player, an amazing leader. You watch him in film, his leadership on the offensive line. That one, that one's doggone near no brainer, you know, non negotiable. Right. And um, and we've talked about Chris Jenkins and and it, it the bloodlines that he has. I mean, just the way he is and and how his teammates talk about him and what and how good he is. I mean, I don't know. Let's put eight or ten guys up there. You know, I mean, I'm uh, out here. You know, they. I mean, I, I know a lot of these teams that are big. Michigan State does it. They have a council. You know, where it's they're kind of like. Not they're not the captains, but they're in the council. You know, you know they're still in in a leadership role, and all these guys are there's leaders on on all levels of the of these. They're, they're sophomore leaders on this team. I get that. Everybody's a leader. I, I understand that. But I mean, there's this is just there's so many to choose from. It's it's like you want to get you want to get all these kids the, the proper attribution that they richly deserve. Oh yeah, and with Zach Zinter, how can you do better than having a Michigan captain back who? Uh, two years ago, predicted Michigan's win over Ohio State publicly yes. in the football preview, and last year uh, provided a performance that will give that has given every every night since probably so, at least one Ohio State fan nightmares. Uh, yeah. The way he knocked people out of the way and opened the door for Donovan Edwards to oh my uh, god, he was, that was an amazing block, amazing Ohio Stadium's field. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got it all. So uh, uh, they're not lacking leadership. I will say that. That's not. They, they got a pretty good uh, chicken coop to go out to. 